Uh, you are Lewis watching is... CIO TV by Enterprise IT World, a production of Accent Info Media. Hello and welcome to CIO TV dot live. Uh, we are at JISEC uh, 2024 and booth of Huawei. You know Huawei as a company is one of the pioneers in many technologies. I have got a gentleman who takes care of Huawei operations from the internal cyber security is concerned. His name is uh, Mr. Lucius Chang. Uh, he is CISO for uh, Huawei. Thank you very much for taking time out and speaking to CIOTV.live. Thank you, thank you, Sanjay, and thank you for this opportunity with CIOTV. I'm just glad to be here uh, on site at JISAT 2024 and uh, on this opportunity with you uh, to talk about Huawei and Huawei cybersecurity. First of all, Huawei is not a cybersecurity company. I know. However, we are an ICT company that do more than ICT, right? We not only are a telecom equipment vendor, we also am a network security company, and we also provide data protection solutions. On top of that, we also have cloud, we have digital power, we also have our own EVs and our own chipset manufacturing capabilities. And today we are here at the booth where we are showcasing one of the hot button topics that are keeping CISOs awake at night, which is the risk coming from ransomware attack. How can I protect my data and prevent them from being held at ransom and prevent them from being lost? So here, ladies and gentlemen, we are showing you an industry leading solution that have multiple layered defense put in place that have obtained some of the industry leading certification in this case by Poly that give you the assurance and the peace of mind that your data is safe with us irregardless of whatever targets that are happening out there that are being converted by uh, all those ransomware attackers, you know, the gang, especially under this kind of uh, political volatile, uh, volatile political situation, which tends to also increase the risk of you being targeted. So, ladies and gentlemen, the, the data storage solution that we have that will be able to provide you with adequate counter ransomware solutions, coupled with the full suite of solutions that Huawei carries here that will protect you from device to edge to cloud. And go one circle back, you, are, you will not be afraid of experiencing the next cyber storm. It's ransomware that you mentioned. Is it the only challenge for the CISOs or CISOs are facing Oh, that is definitely challenges. one of the top, top, top things they are facing. But the other things will be really how to will uh, when the walls are broken down, right? When we talk about having a very complex uh, ecosystem where you have your suppliers, your consumers, and with like in this case, right? There's a lot of people still working from home this way. Mm. How do we protect the security of our data? and of our systems, you know, in, in, in this kind of environment whereby you will not have any problems and uh, loss of sleep from loss of identity uh, due to identity theft to loss of data due to whatever factor of intrusion people are using to get your data, right? So what we provide you, okay, besides the ransom and counter ransomware solutions that I'm, I, I'm eluding here through our data storage, but more in terms of the comprehensive solution that we have in place from our network security solution to our cloud solution, orchestrating them together in symphony to meet all your enterprise requirements. This is what we promise you uh, coming from our experience serving customers in 170 countries, right? And keeping our, com our customers data safe and secure for the last 30 years without a single instance of any major outage. This is the guarantee that we can bring to you. This is the Huawei guarantee. 
All right. I am going to ask you about the intel threat intelligence because the geopolitical situation is not that conducive, not right. So the the CISO challenge is to have that landscape, have that visibility of the threat, the, the intelligence. So what is there? What is your advice? What the CISOs need to do to understand what is going to come in the future? I know you'll be asking me about that, Sanjay, that uh, how useful it is to subscribe to some of the global insights that will be helping your mm. business, helping you address the risks that will be your, your, your business will be facing or may be facing in the future. I would say that such reports are great, but it's not as good as the community effort that we can put together in the platform that we built here in JISAC, in the platform that we built here in J CISO Circle, incidentally, that will be held tomorrow morning. So it's all about people, Sanjay. It's all about forming community of practice. It's all about people coming together and, and collaborate and share information. So besides subscribing to such insights from professional firms, which I think you know, should be something that you know, uh, be baseline requirement if you can afford it, but if you can't, uh, or if you really have it, you should complement it with uh, the interaction, right? And, and, and the collaboration with the community, like a platform like JISAC and, and the CISO circle that JISAC is helping or have helped to launch for the past two years. These are things that, you know, will help to support you, to put you in the position that instead of being reactive, we can be very proactive. Right, so it's all about the power of the community. Right, uh, Alvis says, I understand your point, uh, but the stakeholders are not the CISOs, the stakeholders, the CXOs and the board members. So is there any initiative to, to make the other stakeholders, the say level executives, CXOs, understand the challenges or the, or the real problem for any CISO or the infrastructure, that they should be mentally ready and cooperate and extend their support to the CISO community? Uh, I think that's a very good question, Sanjay, because sometimes <coughs> people always get blindsided yeah. by you know, what they are seeing in the short run, mm. right? People are seeing what they have in the bowl, but they don't know what's there on the table. Mm. So I would say that you have to take a mid to long term uh, perspective whenever they look at any problem. Right. Yes, you may need the problem at the back, but will it come back? Will that be something that will uh, be things to be concerned about in the future? So one of the things that, you know, what we should be doing, and at least what Huawei has been doing, is to conduct regular CISO um, roundtable, where we will provide our customers CISO with the most up-to-date insights and information, what are the hot button topics and why they should be concerned about it and the solutions that you can adopt, embrace, or come together as one, to work together, collaborate to solve the problem. And that's what we did precisely back in February at the last, uh, you know, uh, the uh, NWC, the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, where we helped three separate round tables. One round table for regulator and government mm. entities globally. One round table for global uh, 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 CISOs or global telecom companies. As, as well as one round table for OIC member states countries. Where we saw, um, you know, raving participations and, and huge participation, raving comments from for the participants in all these three round table. For example, we have more than 50 to 60 government and regulator, regulatory bodies attending the government and regulator round table where they say that, man, it's high time for you Huawei to do it. How come you only do it this year? You should have done it in the past. We well, want to see it becoming a regular fixture for NWC. And likewise, for the CSOs round table, you know, for the tel telcos, they are saying that it's valuable. We have more than 30 of them are participating and we're going to run a similar round table soon at Samina this May, focusing on Middle East and Central Asia 
telco providers. And lastly, for OIC, we have saw about 35 of them participating, where nine of them are vice minister and above. Right? And today, this week, we are also going to have an OIC expert working group workshop where we look at some of the emerging technologies and how to secure them. From AI to post-quantum cryptography and some of the uh, you know, uh, things that we have been talking for the last few years, like counter, uh, ran counter ransomware to, to secure supply chain. So these are some of the things that we'll be discussing this Thursday at the at the um, OIC third expert uh, working group that is something that supplements the discussion that we had in in February and we aim to have this regular touch points at every regular juncture every other month in different country different regions so that we can cover everyone so I know that's a tough order to call but we are doing the best we can in order to be the supporting role that we should play for the community, right? It's always, we always look for the most comfortable and stable stool to sit on. But sometimes you have no choice but to sit on the shooting stick. We need to make sure that, you know, we can turn that shooting stick into a comfortable stool, right? We should be able to create something that is reliable, that, you know, uh, companies and countries will come about to use it to support their digital transformation, to support their journey to the digital future. And this is what Huawei is committed to do, to create an open, transparent, collaborative, resilient environment that will support that. This is something that we have taken upon ourselves to, to, to be leading that okay. and working with our customers so, uh, to meet their requirement and expectation on that. Okay. Okay. Any any um, new complaints or regulation that you think that need to be there in either MENA countries or for the OIC countries? Can you visualize or envisage something which is a pain point or challenge area? We should be looking at trustworthy AI soon, right? Very soon. Okay. What do you mean by trustworthy? It must be safe, right? It must be it must be secure. Uh, the result must be traceable. It also must be accountable. So you must be able to be able to uh, train AI in a way that nothing is introduced to it that will uh, affect the judgment. At the same time, during the inference phase, at the inference model, it should be poisoned or changed in a way that it will give you the wrong result. Toxic. It's toxic, toxic. Yeah. right? It's almost like, take for example, if I rely on my navigation system to get me home safely last week, what if someone poisoned that path that I'm going to take? Will that lead me to my da the damage? Maybe not only flood, but we have seen people that, you know, the car submerged and, and, and they are trapped in the car and they die of carbon monoxide. So this could be something that, uh, you know, if the inference model is, in a way, uh, compromised and poisoned by people that want to institute weapon of mass destruction through AI, mm. this is what we must prevent. Therefore, responsible AI is something that we must advocate for, for it to be adopted as soon as possible. So Alice says you, that you, you say that AI needs to be redefined. There should be uh, further development, uh, you know, enhancement of the algorithm within AI to distinguish the go uh, a good uh, AI than the bad AI and work. I mean, I mean, there should be more people working towards making good AI, right, which can help for the larger co cause of the human being than creating because that's also part of the mass destruction that you know, cyber security, hacking and all the stuff. Right. It's good for the humankind mm -hmm. if we can do that. So we need to do it step by step, right? From putting together a common ethical value mm -hmm. to putting in place some best practices and standards in development of system and software 
that are used for AI analytics, how you develop the model, how you do the inference, and how the inference is accepted. So this should be something that you put across from capacity building to engineering to standardization to certification of end-to-end -end process to secure AI through governance, proper risk and governance management. So this is what Huawei put in place within our own company. Right, right. I understand that your point, but the question is that the user and the creators, if you look at the ecosystem, global order now, everything is happening in Asia Pacific and the Middle East. I mean, the larger buzz is happening in these areas. And you know very, very much the reason behind it, yeah. why it is not so vibrant in US, why it is not vibrant in say Japan or in, uh, in uh, EU. So do you expect more to happen uh, uh, in this region, in Middle East region, it should be test ground, it should be change of mind for the people, it should be all the, you know, either field of uh, application here in this region to take the lead and create something something better for the universe. I, I, I like your train of thought, with Sanjay. In fact, I like your, your last part where you say take the lead. Because exactly that's what's happening here in the Middle East, is that Middle East country, especially GCC states, they are always the early adopters of emerging technologies. We are always willing to embrace the change because if you do not embrace the change, the world will still evolve and change despite the fact that you may stay stagnant. But if you stay stagnant, then that's the end of your, in terms of uh, economic development. So we must always embrace the change. Just like when 5G came out, UAE was the first one to jump right. in and say that we yeah. need to have the fastest 5G in the world. Mm. Okay. And for that matter, AI or any new emerging technology, we must always be the first to embrace it. And we need to come out very quickly with the framework, how we can embrace it in a way that it does not hurt the ethical values that will dismantle our social framework. Correct. So this is the number one thing that we need to take into consideration. Despite the fact that we may be gun ho we want to try new things, but we want to try new things that can be controlled. That's why I always say that it's important that the results are repeatable mm. and traceable in a way that it can be safe. Because if anything wrong, you can record that immediately. So what we want to do down here is to encourage the country, this region to embrace the new technology and show the way for the rest of the region how you can do it. But, and I would say that for some region, like for example Europe, they will not be the first early adopter because right. they never were the first, uh, they were never early adopters because they're always concerned about, um, you know, the detrimental effects they will have in their society or to the person because they have written control of, of, of security back to the user in a way that since GDPR, the user has full control over their rights. So that's a good thing. But because of that, you have to get the consensus of everyone staying in the EU zone right. in order to do something. Mm. So that sort of also push back some of the latest development. Mm. So you always need to come to a situation where you have the best of both worlds. And I think in the UAE, in the Middle East, we always manage to play the balancing act. Right, right. And we need to continue to play the balancing act as we continue to chart ahead and embrace the latest technology like AI and show the world how this thing can be done and how this thing can be embraced, just like what we did for, uh, for 5G. Now, we need to do it for AI, and in the future, we need to do for any other new technologies that will come to benefit society because the future is in our hands to make it happen. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you heard uh, Mr. Alois is saying a lot about the leading role that this region, particularly UAE, need to take in adoption of new technology, especially the AIs who are good for the for the human being. Uh, with this, I end this conversation. Thank you, Alusis. We'll Thank have you. another day for a long conversation. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you very much.